This is the largest natural disaster we've ever experienced. On August 8, 2023, it's happened so quick. Fires devastated the western part of the island. Within 10 minutes, the fire was approaching our home. And a young man drove up and he says, Andy, you have to go. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. The fire is coming. The fire is coming. Horrifying moments. And I was crying and telling him to please get out of the house. I don't care what you do. Watching, yeah, the people that you love and you serve every day suffer was, I'll, I'll never forget it, it's a part of you. On the island, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints immediately stepped in to help. One thing I did not realize is how, how our chapels could become um, shelters. Stuff for kids, the stuffed animals, the blankets. Rendering service. A ton of tender mercies. And witnessing miracles. My faith in humanity has grown a million fold. I mean, these are all hand sewn quilts right here. Some of the people who were offering the most care and the most love during that terrible experience, especially in the initial aftermath, they were the people who had lost everything. Turning loss into a community of caring. Even though that I lost everything, work to job to basically everything that I have, but I find joy, I find comfort of helping others. Knowing that we are children of our Heavenly Father, that's what makes Maui strong. Making the trek to the top of Haleakala Summit on the island of Maui at 10,000 feet above sea level, a new day greets you with a spectacular sunrise high above the clouds. Down below, familiar sounds of crashing waves fill the air. 911 emergency. We just can't get out. There's yeah. no way out. But on the morning of August 8, 2023, serenity quickly churned into roaring wildfires on Lahaina and other areas of the island. That day I will, will never forget. It was the deadliest U.S. wildfire in more than a century. We had multiple fires on Maui that day starting early in the morning. The fires went into the night and there were reports of uh, getting people medevaced to Honolulu, to the burn centers. Officials say nearly 100 people died and more than 2,000 structures were destroyed. I was surprised by the magnitude of the damage and devastation we had gone through. Could, could not imagine it in, in, in a million years. Unaloto Taukiaho was at home with his wife and children. That morning was very windy. Uh, at the time, there wasn't any fire. So I left the home with the plan that we all gonna go to the hotel uh, and stay there. So my kids was prepared, having their backpack changes. So I left to the store, which is only a quarter mile from my house. And so when I walk out the store, that's when I got a phone call from my wife that there's a fire. It's happened so quick. Uh, I would say within 10 minutes, the fire was approaching our home. So I basically tell my wife, tell the kids, let's meet at Foodland. My wife couldn't go all the way to Kahului. We met it up at Boys and Girls uh, Club. I left my truck there, and just jumping in the car with my wife and the children. They made it safely to a hotel. Two days later, Una learned the heartbreaking news. First, we stopped by at my business. It was all gone. And then we make our way out to our home, that everything was burned. What was that like seeing it for the first time after you had left two days prior? Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty tough to see. Uh, it's not because of uh, material things that was in there. But in our home, there's a lot of memories with the COVID. Uh, set apart missionaries in our home. In our home where we call it church, we have our own sacrament meeting where I provide sacrament to my family where we do come follow me. It's where I bless my children. Among the two wards, well over 100 families lost their homes. Months later, Valerie Hopai still struggles to make sense of it. That's where I lived for 49 years and never did I think that <laughs> something like this would ever happen to all of us in the 
She was home with her dog when the winds picked up and the power went out. Later part in the afternoon, I heard um, things were popping and I just said, I said, well, I'm going to stay here because I don't think I have to worry. The, the winds are going the other way and the fire is going the other way as well. Two hours later, the wind shifted. Valerie quickly grabbed her dog and fled. <laughs> so I jumped and left. And I didn't realize I left my husband's ashes. And then a couple days later, we went back to the property and, you know, it was just flat, just devastated. Not only my house, but everybody that I knew and loved in Lahaina and some of our, our ward. Because it was then that I found out there were 41 of us members that lost our house. Like so many others, Una's journey from grief to healing is fueled by the Aloha spirit. You know, Lahaina is a very special place, not only for us here at uh, local. Lahaina is a special place for everyone throughout the world. Because what Lahaina can offer to everyone you cannot find that, the Aloha spirit. Yeah, the wind was 80 miles an hour this way, so when you open the front door, the smoke, ambers, and rocks were blowing sideways. Raymond Catagall drove us through the ruins of his neighborhood in Lahaina. This house here is my auntie, uh, Lily's auntie's house, right there. Entire homes burned to the ground in what looked more like a war zone. From our house, I ran behind my neighbors and watched they were fighting the fire with a two-inch hose, and I sat there, sat there in a, in a few seconds, saw it. he was fighting in front of him, the fire was around him, and then the fire was between he and I, that fast. This decimated lot is where his home once stood. We spent a lot of time out here with our kids. and He and his wife, Lily, raised their everything. family there. This is a truck that didn't survive. But you can see how intense the heat was, the glass even melted. So this was a star fruit tree. <laughs> It looks, like so, it looks like it's trying to come back over there. Everything was gone, including the giant mango tree she had planted years ago. It's just like the devastation. It's just, it's hard to wrap your head around it sometimes. When sifting through the ash, some pieces of their past surfaced, a clasp ring, special china, and a mug with the words faith, hope, and love. I think the hardest thing for me as a mom was I didn't have a place for my children to come home to. You know, so uh, gather around that feeling, having them, you know, come over and share a meal or just hang out that I had nowhere for them to come. That was very difficult. Over the years, they had housed missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is what the, uh, the missionaries stayed in for five years with us, yeah. sisters and elders. But fortunately, the missionaries had recently been transferred and none were living with them at the time. The Lord knew what was going to happen before we did, and, and they were watched over and they were, they were taken care of, so we're grateful for that. Many lost loved ones. Joanne Phillips was on the phone with her brother. He desperately tried to find a way out of their house. So when he called, I told him, yes, I know electricity is out. I'm outside trying to gather up the cans and the baskets. As the winds picked up, she decided to leave Lahaina but her brother insisted on staying put until it was too late. He could not get out and he was calling me to let me know. And I was crying and telling him to please get out of the house. I don't care what you do. Bust a window, jump out, go to the neighbor's house, which is down the street and run. And our phones got disconnected at that time. And this just in, we've learned the identity of another Lahaina wildfire victim. Maui police confirmed 69-year-old Leroy Wagner of Lahaina was killed in the fire. My sons had gone onto the property. They had snuck onto the property a couple of days later and noticed the um, colored X mark at where his body was found. And so for a while in August, I was a total mess. Heartbreaking losses forever changing the beloved community. Yet the people of Lahaina still count their blessings. I had just lost my mom in March of this year also. And my brother and I were working together to fix the house and get things going. And 
so it was hard then having to lose him in August on my birthday. But the Lord really helped us through. To find strength through one another. My children, they, trying to count, comfort me, told me, you know, Mom, it's not about the walls. It's about where our heart is and where you, wherever you and Dad are, that's home. A testament to their enduring resilience. Right now, I am just blessed, I'm thankful, and I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy that my children are alive. I'm happy we have so many of our friends, our neighbors, our members have been blessed and are still here. And I said, we'll wait for the Lord to tell us what to do. Thousands escaped their burning homes, grabbing what belongings they could before the flames took over. Evacuees sought refuge in temporary shelters. Part of what we were experiencing on Maui is because of the multiple fires in the multiple locations, we ended up opening uh, multiple evacuation centers. As the Red Cross worked to get set up on the island, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints stepped in to help. The LDS church opened up two of their churches for us. And what I recall very strongly about it is they said to us, you don't need to send any Red Cross. You don't need to send any food. We will take the people that come to us and we will feed them and, uh, you know, house them there. Members of the Kahului West Stake were quick to respond. We were able to throw together a shelter in such a short period of time. I'm, I'm talking about like within an hour we had goods being delivered there. Within an hour we had beds being set up. Within the hour we had people, families being put together in a room of some privacy and having a place to to charge phones and coordinate with their families and put their kids to bed. We had so many people come over that actually in the middle of the night we opened the second stick center. And so we got a call for my husband to go down and do security and we grabbed every pillow and blanket and sleeping bag. Sorry. Um, in our house. As well as my boys to go down and do security. We tried to make it as comfortable and, and make it as nice for them as possible. And the the individuals or the, the, the ones that were just by themselves, they, they actually slept on the pews in the chapel. So the chapel was filled. It became known across all the islands of, Mount, of Hawaii that um, this was a place where you're safe. This was a place where if you come, you'll have hot food and you'll have a place to sleep. As the meeting house filled up, donations poured in. I saw a little note was on one of the box. It says, Maui, we love you. Your ohana. Ohana in Hawaiian means your family. You know, families is uh, that's the most important thing you have in this life. The kindness of strangers was overwhelming. Donations from people from around the world really that thought of Maui and thought, okay, how can we support Maui? To help the people on Lahaina recover, the Hawaii Community Foundation launched the Maui Strong Fund the day after the fires broke out. People of all ages contributed. We've had uh, groups of kids like all over the country doing lemonade stands and cookie sales and sending in their allowance. The massive response was unexpected. I think I was getting an email and a phone call every minute for about two or three weeks. As we see these apocalyptic scenes out of Hawaii, many of our thirst, first thoughts as Utahns are how can we help those in such dire need? Well, Locally TV viewers and, and listeners from all Bonneville International Bonneville stations, stations including KSL TV right and all the radio stations, raised more than $450,000 for the Maui Strong, Strong Fund. Yeah. We wanted to present you this check. Thank you so um, much. On behalf of us. Oh, thank you so much. We had over 800 businesses burnt down. So people woke up the day after the fire with no home, no employment. Um, some of their, the schools were burnt down. And victims of the devastating wildfires also got a big assist from the Utah Jazz. The Jazz have been out here for what, six days now? And in October, they played their first preseason game against the Los Angeles Clippers in Oahu. All proceeds from the game were donated to the Maui Strong Fund. Once that happened and everybody saw the devastating effect in Hawaii, um, it, it was a very easy conversation. Both us and the Clippers knew that uh, if we were going to go there and, and partake in, once again, the great culture of Hawaii, that 
there's no way we couldn't leave a positive impact behind. And, and beyond just making a financial contribution, uh, several of the players and coaches had the opportunity to go to the food bank and help package food where that food would be delivered directly to the community of Maui and, and, and those that were in need. Since February, the Maui Strong Fund has collected $180 million and county, the largest fundraiser in the history of the Hawaii Community Foundation. Money from the Maui Strong Fund has been given to more than 150 organizations from food, health care, and mental health to workforce development and housing. Even animals benefited from the generous donations of strangers. After the houses burnt down, there was hundreds of pets that were displaced. And so they took in all hundreds and hundreds of dogs and cats. He's just a big lump, like he's a huge lump sponge. Within days, the Hawaii Animal Rescue Foundation, a nonprofit in Wailuku, stepped in to help. A lot of these animals that came, um, some of them had injuries, a couple of them had burns. Hi, buddy. Each was housed, fed, and provided medical care. These calls were coming from um, uh, families that had lost their homes, primarily in the Lahaina area. Um, they, were, they escaped with their lives and they escaped with their pets. Some of them had dogs, cats, some of them had rabbits, guinea pigs, tortoises. And they said, is there anything you can do? Um, I can go into a shelter um, temporarily, but they won't take my pet. Hi guys! Most of these families, they were still in shock. The animals were still in shock. Um, and um, it was it was really um, heartbreaking. Yes, hi sweet baby. We were able to put up uh, dog kennels, uh, pop-up kennels for cats, and a variety of other enclosures. This was not in our budget. We would not have been able to do what we've done to the extent that we've done it if we would not have had um, financial assistance. So that was critical. It's like Maui's getting a world hug. You know, it's like everyone is just here, they're with us, they're supporting us. Um, it's just been, it, it's been amazing. This was all just solid canopy. Thick, dark green leaves. The sprawling branches of the old banyan tree serves as the heart and soul of Lahaina. A couple different names is Banyan Tree Park. Courthouse Square, it's the old, old courthouse on the other side. Planted 150 years ago on the town's famous Front Street. It's not only the biggest banyan on the island, it's the biggest banyan in the country. People are deeply connected to the banyan. This is a community tree, it's a community park. Artists, you know, will sit up and draw here. They'll do a little, like, farmer's market. Seeing it and everything else along Front Street completely destroyed was devastating. The fire, it does its thing. Why does it, one building survive and the one next to it is completely flattened. But shortly after the fires, the banyan tree began showing new life. Just hoping maybe in two, three months, we would see some sign of life and it came in three weeks. A symbol of hope to a community still reeling in grief. It definitely is a miracle that this tree survived. This basically is like a phoenix from the ashes. Giving assurance that all was not lost. This is the, the natural color of the tree. It's not charred. The wooden benches underneath mostly survived. And despite the hardships that lie ahead. It's, its personality will be scarred for a while. It's going to take a lot of physical therapy. The focus is now on the future. It gives people hope that if this tree shows signs of life, Lahaina Town will sh once again show signs of life as well. Hope is what Una Takiaho holds on to. I just remember my savior, that it's still there for me, and that's what gives me the hope. In the Lahaina Second Ward, Bishop Matavai Moui Ma lost his home. Most of our members lost their home and everything. But their faith in Jesus Christ is unbelievable. It strengthened me uh, to do more to my watch members. Like Bishop Ma, Takiaho looks to the Savior for strength and has witnessed miracles in the midst of tragedy. The miracle is right here in, in, in this very holy place that we call it the church. You know, as you look around, the fires go around. 
not just one building, both buildings. There remains a long road ahead for those recovering from the deadly wildfires. People hold on to the memories of those they lost with a memorial on the hillside above Lahaina, each cross representing a beloved member of the community taken too soon. But through their grief, they look for signs of hope. Just months after the fire, President Russell M. Nelson announced plans to construct the Kahului Hawaii Temple, Maui's first temple. We are grateful to announce our plans to build a temple in each of the following 20 locations. Kahului Maui, Hawaii. That was so exciting. That was the healing news, healing bomb that we needed. The timing of it, I think the Lord and his servants were able to know that it was the time that would lift us up and it was a time that would bring hope to us. Saints received further inspiration in February, a visit from Elder Ronald A. Rasband of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He wants a part of the rebuilding of their lives to be focused on the temple. He sent me here for a reason that you might know here in Maui, you are not forgotten. You're loved. A reminder that with the Lord, they are Maui strong. In spite of everything that we lost, in spite of everything we've gone through, to count the blessings and to know that He is there lifting us up. Like they say, there's no warrior can stand alone. But if you come together, things will make it even stronger. Maui strong, Lahaina strong because we come together. That's what makes Maui strong.